Hello, in this video, we will learn JMeter completely from installation to load testing of APIs. We will also learn about important settings and how to read result of load test. In this section, we will try to understand what is JMeter. JMeter is an open source tool which is popularly used for load testing of APIs. If you are a complete beginner in JMeter, please find my another video in the description where I have explained JMeter for complete beginners. In this section, we will download and install JMeter on our system. This is simple two-step installation guide for Mac operating systems. We will start with installing Homebrew. So search homebrew.sh on your browser where you will find the installation command. Fire this command from your terminal and it will prompt for password. Enter your password and it will ask confirmation that following things will be installed. Just press return button or that is the enter button and your installation should start. With this message, you are now sure that your installation has already been completed successfully. Our second and final step is to install JMeter. After installation of Homebrew, just run a simple command preview install JMeter and your downloading and installation of JMeter should start. After few minutes, you will see that JMeter is installed in standard Homebrew directory. You can cd into this directory and run a JMeter script. Once you run a JMeter command, JMeter GUI will be loaded. In this section, we will prepare load test scripts and we will also look into important settings which are required for API load testing. When you start JMeter, you will see an empty test plan. You can use it as it is or you can create a new test plan from a new file. We need minimum three configuration for any load test. First is a test plan. Second is a thread group which consists of group of test and third is sampler which can be our HTTP request. In this section we will create a test plan for our API test. After starting JMeter a default test plan is already loaded. You can also create new test plan if needed. You can give any meaningful name to your test plan and also add any meaningful comment to explain this test plan. Now second thing which we need for this load test is a thread group so just right click on your test plan. Under add option you will see threads user. Click thread group which will add thread group under your test plan. Similar to test plan, you can also add some meaningful name and comment to this thread group. There are few settings under thread group which we will have to configure. So let's check them one by one. So first one is action to be taken in case if there is any sampler error. Default is continue but you can choose any option based on your use case. Next configuration is about thread properties. So thread group can be a group of more than one thread. So with number of thread setting, you can give a number which you want to simulate to your API call. If I say 10, it means that 10 users are calling this API under this load test. Our next setting is ramp up period. This setting will tell JMeter how long to take to ramp up to full number of threads. For example, if I have 10 threads for this test case and ramp up period is 100 seconds, then JMeter will take around 100 seconds to get all th 10 threads up and running. For this demonstration, I will change this setting to 3 seconds. Next is a loop count configuration where you can run your test case more than one to some finite number or you can directly set it to an infinite option. We will set three loop count for this demonstration. Next setting is same user on each iteration. It will basically reuse the same thread which was created on first iteration. Next setting of delaying thread creation until needed is basically to lazily create threads. When you have a lot of threads in your test case, it is better to go with option to delay thread creation as because in ramp up period, all threads will not be basically used at beginning of your test case, but it will be created slowly. So when you have a lot of threads, just go with this option. Finally, you also have option to specify threads lifetime. In very specific scenarios, there might be requirement where you need to kill threads in specific time. So you can use this option. For this tutorial, I will skip it. That is it. So we already have our thread group ready and configured for our load test. Now we will add third and final configuration that is HTTP request sampler. Right click on thread group. Under add option you will see sampler and under sampler you can find HTTP request. Click on this option and you will find HTTP request is added under your test plan third, third group. Here you have option to edit name and comment. So add any meaningful name or comment to your HTTP request sampler. Next, we will configure some settings which require details of API. Under setting, first option is protocol. Protocol can be HTTPS or HTTP. It depends on your API. Next option is to add server name or IP address. So you can mention your server name or IP address in this part. 
third option is port number if it is http it is 80 and usually https it is 443 so you can get this port number from your server specification or api specification next option is type of http request it can be either get post or any type of request in this example we will demonstrate get type finally we will add path of our target api all other options we will keep as it is defaults in case if there are any query parameters to your request you can add parameters with this option the add button just click on this add button and add name of the parameter so in my case name is page and you can provide value so any value we have added all necessary settings for http request sampler now just go ahead and save this test plan we will take a look at how to set basic authentication if it is required for your api right click on thread group under add you will find config element under config element you can find option for http authorization manager so just add this http authorization manager http authorization manager is added you can give some meaningful name and comment as usual there are some options like clear auth on each iteration or use thread group configuration to control clearing you we will just let it be as it is for now next you will find important area where authorizations can be added so just click on add here you have base url the url for which you have to add authorization username and password you can also select type of authorization which is required for your api from this option since we don't need this authorization for my demonstration so i will just go ahead and remove this authentication manager in this section we will run our load test script which we have created there are two ways of running a load test script one is using gui and second is using command prompt remember that running jmeter load test from gui is not recommended on production environment i have created a detailed video explaining reason for that you can find in the description on or on the i button we will run our load test in gui mode first we will add a listener so that we can view our result we will add a result in table type of listener now click the run button the green button on top of your screen and from log you can see that our test is getting executed if you click on a listener view result in table listener you can see result of our test in a tabular format if you remember we had 10 thread and 3 loops so total 30 number of samples you can see more details about start time and thread name and label and more details about every call to api which will help you to figure out performance of your, of your api now we will see how to run our test script using a command mode which is recommended mode for production so first make sure that you save your test plan i will rename and save my gmx file so on console you can see that at this particular location my file has been saved now go to the command prompt and cd into the bin folder of jmeter here you can see that i'm already into the bin folder now you have to execute a simple jmeter command with parameters of file name and location where you have stored your jmx file that is the test script file so now jmeter test is executing and you will see this kind of log on your screen you can see we have three iterations as we had three loops and this is end of your test case execution thank you very much for watching this video and please subscribe to our channel we create more such simplified videos for you you can check from our channel videos